What better time to listen to some Richard Spencer here than at the end of the world? Generally don't care. To be honest. Uh, okay, I was just wondering because you know I, I thought uh, some of the videos you guys together. No, then that's no uh, slight at Ed Dutton or Talking whoever about with these days. Right. Richard I, I, I thought, and uh, Mark Brahman. Millennial Woes was a pretty and Millennial uh, Woes. Yeah, intelligent I, I, guy uh, at times. He is an intelligent guy. Um, I would certainly be willing to do something with him, but. Um, yeah, I, mean, there, there was a... I think Richard's main problem with Millennial Woes is aesthetic. He just finds him dumpy and grubby. There's a real, uh, you know, there's a just kind of clickish kind of stuff going on. And I guess I'm a click of one. So, uh, yeah. But I'm not, I don't have anything, nothing happened. And I don't have any ill will or anything. Um, at the same time, I, I kind of want to move past a lot of that stuff, to be honest. Um, just the white nationalism, it just, uh, uh, just bores me. I don't, I don't, Frank. I wouldn't call him a white nationalist. Well, okay, but... Uh, <laughs> of course, Millennial <laughs> was. It's a really good description. Um, that was all, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Mike. Hey, hi, uh, Richard. I stopped calling you Rich. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I, I was watching or listening to a Nick Fuentes um, Spacey had, I think, and you were in it. It was about four weeks ago, and you two hadn't talked in years. And what a nice meeting that was. You were both very gracious towards each other, even though you have some uh, opposing uh, ideology. And uh, it was really nice seeing that. Uh, he, gave, he gave his analysis of you afterwards. I thought it was pretty good. He said I, he had told you for years, or he had told you not for years, but he, he said, look, you're an intellectual, you're an elitist, and you write well. You should stick to writing and not go on these uh, tours. Uh, he said it just wasn't something that uh, you, you were really built for. Um, I thought nice you did. conversation. I thought it was a bit rude what he said afterwards, to be honest oh. with you. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't. I thought he gave Richard a lot. He, he called Richard an intellectual oh, goal. Yeah. I, uh, uh, I was not expecting that. I, uh, I I was looking at Twitter as I was working that. There was a space with a couple hundred people in it, and I was curious. Lo and behold, Nick was there. It was rather surprising. I, I actually was expecting, um, you know, this you know, typical Fuentes, you know, insult barrage. But I served the ball across the court um, in a respectful manner, and it was returned. So I thought that was good. Um, I will say this about... Um, I do think that there's kind of a man behind the mask, so to speak. Maybe it's a kid wearing a Darth Vader helmet, but there's still, like, someone there. And uh, so I, I do think he's able to listen or things like that. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, criticism of me, I mean, whatever. I mean, I, yeah, I uh, appreciate being called a good writer and so on. Um, I, uh, I do think that I'm good in front of a crowd, but that probably can't happen um, in, because of the world we live in. But we'll see. Uh, but I think the main thing is I really don't want to go down the path again because the path doesn't really lead anywhere. I mean, the path that you tread being a kind of Trump fan is the path towards January 6th or something like that. Um, I mean, that's the way that Nick is used. I mean, Nick is very good in front of a crowd. He is very good on his live streams. He has a organic audience, um, unlike many conservatives. But that, if he's playing the game of being at the end of the day, a Republican or Trump cheerleader, there will be people who will ultimately use him for their own ends. People who don't have an organic audience, who don't have charisma or whatever you want to call it and stuff. Um, and they're going to use him and they're going to put him in situations where he's going to take the fall. Uh, Stop the Steel being an excellent example. Um, but, you know, anyway, I, I do think that Nick kind of had, there's a man behind the mask, a boy behind the mask. <laughs> I do think there's a real person there. But I also think that, you know, our ideological differences are, are pretty, pretty great. Okay, let's uh, fast forward here. There we go. Death squads, right wing death squads. Didn't she say that? So she was kind of on that Laura Luna. version of the alt right. But I can't imagine her voting for a Democrat. I mean, she's she's a conservative movement monster. Oh, Ann Coulter. She's such Ann a glamorous Coulter. queen. I'm obsessed with her. Yeah, I like Ann Coulter. And a Christian. He has some good books. Oh my God, I could never stand her. <laughs> it's just such an anti-intellectual movement and it's just so like I don't know it's, it just doesn't have a vision and because left I think by anti-intellectual he means unesthetic right not not aesthetically pleasing left is reactionary well yeah I mean yeah like, like, you like, 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 like that. so it's, it's it's about what's cool right it's not so much about what's intellectual it's about what's cool Race realist liberal, like would that be an accurate assessment of your ideology? What would you call yourself? Well, I mean, I, 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 I do. I, I guess you could really call me a race realist. I mean, I, I think that's a, a very. Do you like thing Steve Saylor? Published. Yeah, I think Steve Saylor is fun. I've always liked Steve Saylor. Um, but 
yeah, I mean, I, again, my concerns, like, what I actually care about is just a lot bigger than, than the stuff. Like what? What do you care about? Well, we're, um, we're moving towards Apolloism. Apolloism? <laughs> Apolloism. Like, yes. like paganism. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm glad I'm shocking you all. You are? Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, let me Google that real quick. Um, do you want that to be like a, like a dominant religion in the culture and why? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully around the world. I have a serious question for you, uh, Richard. Um, okay. How shocked were you when Roland Martin informed you that Egypt was, in fact, in Africa? <laughs> <laughs> um, that was pretty funny. I believe I said that Egyptians are white, which would make it not the best. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Although not inaccurate um, entirely, at least for founders. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was maybe the best response in that context of a, that kind of hostile interview. But, yes, it, I, I do think that there are people out like... Um, Egypt, like African Egypt, Egyptology, is kind of similar to the Kanye stuff about like whatever he believes. I, I don't, I don't know exactly what he believes. I think some people, like people in, this docu- in that documentary that Kyrie Irving mentioned, I believe they they think the Jews of the Bible were uh, sub-Saharan Africans. I think Kanye, again, to be you know trying to accurately represent what he thinks, I, I think that he believes that Africans were almost like a Kushites or something. They were like a tribe of Israel. But I don't think he is. I, I remember. I don't think he has stable beliefs. He's just saying, yeah, that's that's fair, but he, he kind of does believe in something, you know? Like, however weird it, it might be, he, he has a belief system. I, and I I remember seeing him shake his head when Lex Friedman said, this reminds me of Black Hebrew right stuff, and he kind of shook his head, so I'll take him at his word. Um, I think he believes that, like, he's the tribe of Kush or something like this, or African-American, or Africans are. Uh, but, and then he also kind of said, but everyone comes from Africa, and so the Jews come from Africa, so he becomes a Jew that way, too. I mean, who knows exactly? Uh, it's it is rather weird, but I do think he sincerely believes those things. Uh, I know you've been uh, in favor of uh, uh, you know kind of uh, uh, on Ukraine in this uh, in this global position here. Are you at all concerned about the uh, and uh, possible nuclear ramifications for what's happening right now, or, or is that something that you're not way too concerned about? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm concerned about it, but it, it is what it is. Um, I mean, in the sense that you know, I, I don't think we should just say, oh, well, let's give up on Ukraine and let's get out of NATO so we don't risk nuclear war or something like that. Um, I don't believe in those things. Um, we're in it. We have certain responsibilities. Um, I think in some, in many ways, actually, I, I, I think a conflict with Russia is um, just what the doctor ordered, you could say. Um, once there is a kind of, con- you know, conflict is natural and it's defining. And I, I think it could actually revive the West in a way. I, I think it could bring a kind of realism to the, the way we operate that, you know, unipolarity or whatever just wouldn't. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't really quite think of it in those kind of paleo ways where everyone's just kind of allergic to conflict. And for paleo conservatives like Chad who believes that, you know, if, if only we could just trade and live in tiny little statelets, there'd be no problems in the world or something like that. I never believe that. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but I mean, millions of people might die from World War Three, And I mean, you know, like I said, that's not good. So. Well, they're going to die anyway. And uh, now they can die <laughs> but don't you think just preventing that, just not having the war, just letting Ukraine and Russia fight it out, it's just, you can't just let that be? Uh, I don't know. Sounds a little, uh, what they their chat. What are you afraid of? Not afraid of anything, just, uh, don't want millions of people to die. You know? We're all gonna die. And, and Russia, and Russia, and, and the American government is more of a threat to me than Russia, so, you know? Yeah, no, I understand. Um, I understand your perspective. I'm being a bit provocative, as I think you can tell. Um, that's all I understand. I understand your perspective. I have definitely, talking with you, it is a blast from the past because there was a, a time in my life where I was surrounded by paleo libertarians, so I kind of know the, the way you think. And I you were on my show before. You were on my show years ago. The Chad Factor. The Chad Factor. Who among us can forget the Chad Factor? <laughs>